Thank you. Well, well, we do enjoy a bit of a burn-up, you know. Teehee. Well, if you thought you'd seen the last programme of dynamic young things dashing about the field of sport, well, uh, you were quite right, because this is Star Games. And uh, we have six teams of uh, familiar faces and well-worn bodies doing uh, extraordinary things in the name of charity and sport. More of the charity later. The first two teams in this, our very first heat, are the Enforcers versus the uh, Informers. The captain of the Enforcers is you, Brendan Price, and the captain of the Informers is Ed Stewart. Let's meet the teams then. First of all, the Enforcers. And here they are, the ones who lay down the law their own ruthless way. An avenger with nothing yet to avenge, Gareth Hunt. Mark from the Flambards, known to his chums as Stephen Grives. From the pages of the Enigma file, the intrepid Tom Adams. Looking only slightly less menacing without his Darth Vader outfit, the mighty Dave Prowse. Uh, Blake Seven is down to five today because the Enforcers have borrowed Avon, that's Paul Darrow and our First Lady, Servilan, Jacqueline Pierce. From Master Spy, the impeccable Miss Moneypacker, Jenny Lee Wright. And the Captain, the All-Rounder, with the square jaw, Brendan Price. Well, it's a hard title, the Enforcers, and a pretty hard team, Brendan. Very, very hard. I mean, we've got people come all over the galaxy to take part today, Michael. Mm. We've got Darth Vader, who's specialist in laser sword fighting. But then somebody told me that we're not actually doing it this time, so I'm... I'm a bit worried. I think if he gets upset, you know. We have got some unusual ones you'll discover to your, I hope not, cost. <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a coach as well. We have. He's taken the day off from giving James Bond all his instructions. It's M himself, Bernard Lee. Bernard. Bernard. Yeah. Come on in. <laughs> you deal with hard men most of your working life, don't you? Uh, yes, I do. Yes. As far as that, my father is in the steel business. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. That's the first I've done this afternoon. It's pretty awful, isn't it? What, do you, what words of encouragement have you given the team? Given the team? Well, I've had to do very little. In fact, in fact uh, Brendan's done most of it, bless his heart, and there's in the still great uh, competitive spirit. Bernard, well, just a very strong influence behind us. Good. Well, let's see what the opposition is like, because that's what it's about. And we're going to meet now the informers. The facts on the informers, a man who's all heart, not a lot of body, the phone-in man from Radio 2, Adrian Love. Now having flown the magpie's nest, a determined Mick Robertson. Someone who only sees daylight on these occasions, Radio 2's late man Bob Kilby. The James Bond of tomorrow's world, or the Seb Co of the senior citizens, William Woolard. DJ, sometime ruler of the world, Emperor Roscoe. The girls are very well informed, in fact inform in every way. Sue Cook from Nationwide. And on loan from Noel Edmonds, the girl in the driving seat here, multicoloured Maggie Philbin. And who else could their captain be but uh, Thingy? Well, would you say that's as strong a team as you've ever assembled? Um, I should think so, yes. Uh, we had a fairly strong team last time, but we got defeated in the semi-final, if you remember. But uh, this time, hand-picked, and we are very optimistic. And you have a very fine coach. Oh, an excellent coach. He's over here, sure. Straight. Straight. You've seen his face before many times. Yes. I am the coach that leaves in a few moments for Yarmouth. Well, stick around. We've got a few events before then. Any, any secret plans that you can hint at? Well, I haven't really got over wearing all this rather splendid gear, which I was showing on Police 5 only last week. I think it's quite smart. But like it? last time, we do have some excellent legs. Oh, indeed, sir. Quite indeed. off-putting to the opposition. We've right. got some very beautiful girls working for us. We've got some very brawny lads. We're a bit short on brains, but we're working on that. Well, that's good enough. It'll do well. Congratulations. Thank you. And, of course, the, the team is completed by two very fine commentators. It's Alan Pascoe back again for another series. And welcome to his colleague, Pam Rhodes. Well, this time we've got uh, two new events. There are still seven, but there are two new ones. There is archery and motorcycling. So some exciting moments promised, at least. Uh, we start with uh, canoeing, and even that is not quite what it used to be. No, it's different from last time in that we don't have inflatable boats on the swimming pool, but real canoes on a real river. The race is in three legs, and it's going to be a faster event in every way. Not without its uh, dangers, of course. Going first for the Enforcers, Stephen Grives and Jenny Lee Wright. For the Informers, it's Maggie Philbin and Mick Robertson. So over to Alan Pascoe. Take your mark. Looking more like four intrepid explorers about to go down the Amazon. Set off by a distant shot. So, three legs in this relay. Two double canoes followed on the final leg by a single canoe. Each canoe has to navigate the par parallel poles that form the slalom gates. And Star Games rules state that whilst 
The canoe, all the paddles can touch the poles. The competitors' bodies may not. And so you can see Jenny Lee Wright holding her paddles well very high above her head there to ensure that they don't hit the poles and the poles then swing back to her body and accumulate penalty points. And we've lost somewhere Mick Robertson and Maggie Philbin seem to have been lost in some backwater five or six lengths behind at the moment. We come into the first changeover. Steve and Jenny handing over to Tom Adams and Paul Darrow. A very gentle start for them. They're perhaps giving the opposition a little chance to make up some ground. Here they come, Mick Robertson and Maggie over in the background. They will hand over to Emperor Roscoe and Adrian Love. They're ready. Rider Law's going down into the water. Arm and Paul, very sedate, very steady. Looking very unsure of themselves. Tom Adams more like the captain of the ship. But they're going to have to get a move on because Emperor Roscoe and Adrian Love are chasing them. A nervous look round there by Paul Darrow. And here come the two DJs as they go through the first of the two return gates. Tom Adams points the way through with his paddles, but the gap is narrowing all the time as Roscoe and Adrian Love begin to make up the ground. The second of their two gates now on this second leg. And there's not a lot in it. Both teams slightly in trouble, drifting towards the banks. Some confusion out there at the moment. Both teams looking very unsteady. Tom Adams and Paul Darrow looking more like a Mississippi steamship trying to get going. Have not much more success in the back for Emperor Roscoe and Adrian Go on, Go on, well, who's going to get to the changeover point first? It's Tom Adams and Paul Darrow away. They're going to hand over to Dave Krause. And on the far side, for the informers, it'll be William Muller. Dave Krause first into his paddle. And now William Muller. So not neck and neck now, not a lot in it. Can William Muller make up the gap? Into the first gate. No bodies, remember. And Dave Krause leaning to the side, trying to steer his canoe with his body. That's fatal. And down he goes. So it's all over now, unless William Mullard goes in as well. He's looking very confident. The force was without him. Exactly. <laughs> Encouragement from the side as William Mullard takes great delight in his team performance as the informers come through to win the canoe event. And where's poor Dave Prowse? You did very well there. You had some competition from Dave. I thought the rapids were a bit difficult, didn't you? Really? Going over those rapids. <laughs> Actually, you noticed if you've done a canoeing before, had you? No, I haven't, honestly. I mean, it's the first time I've been in one of these canoes. The second last time I did canoeing was in Star Games last year in those little collapsible things which uh, tipped over. But these are good fun, very good fun indeed. Really? You're really puffed out, aren't you? They're hard work. <laughs> Absolutely. Did you see Dave going over there? I didn't know. What happened to him? Well, you suddenly uh, ended up underneath, and I wonder if it's quite it's hard those, actually to It's those right. size 12 shoes. Have you seen his shoes? <laughs> he has specially built shoes, which... Well, I think have concrete buttons or something. Well, I think getting a six foot eight frame into a canoe is really good. You better go away and get your puff back. Anyway, thank you. Uh, and a lot of commiseration for you, too. Oh, well, I know, I know. Well, I think I'm too heavy for the canoe. Really? I think that's something. I'm about 18 and a half stone. And as, as soon as the canoe started to rock, that was it. I was over and I was out. Really? That was good fun. Was it hard getting in in the first place? No, it's not hard getting in. It was a much easier <laughs> getting out. <laughs> So with Dave Prowse capsizing, the river is refilled and the win is registered for the informers. And each team wins two pounds a point for its respective charity. <laughs> and our first look at the scoreboard, informers 100 points, enforcers 50. Well, at this stage of the games, and while we're all still friends, and luckily Dave Prowse is still with us, uh, let us uh, check with the, uh, the coaches of the two teams just what they are struggling to raise money for. Uh, the coach of the enforcers, Bernard Lee. Bernard, what, what are you raising money for? Well, uh, specialised equipment for disabled children, uh, particularly the deaf and the blind. You know, uh, chairs with what they call solid devices which helps them enormously to maneuver you know and i must uh, say that all these charities are run by the variety club of great britain very 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 worthy cause and a, and a great club well certainly what you've got is a very unusual one now for the informers a rather unfortunate type. oh yes yes grass you might almost call Thank me you. right well it suits you really <laughs> Sure, sure. What are you raising the money for? Well, again, it's Variety Club, uh, but this is Variety Club looking after not only handicapped children, but deprived children as well, because 
a lot of kids, because mum and dad haven't got too much money, or maybe they haven't got any parents at all, they never see anywhere except their own environment. You know, they maybe go to school, they go home, and all they know is the streets around their home. And this idea is for Variety Club to take them out, give them outings, circuses or safari parks, things like that. Mm. I mean, back in June, I think they took 15,000 kids in one go on an outing. And that takes some organising, and of course it takes some money, and that's what we're trying to raise money for. Well, I uh, hope you both will win. They're terrific causes. And now to the next event, the thrills and possibly spills of motorcycling. And the next event is a new one, the Star Games. As you'll see, it's a rather winding course through these lovely Buckinghamshire trees, with quite a few obstacles in the final stages. Alan Pascoe is going to take a turn around the course and give us some comments on the way. That's him looking like a sort of cut-price Darth Vader. Well, I'm most worried about actually starting the bike. Perhaps the ladies can help. Hmm. Yeah, on second thoughts, perhaps they can't. So we move on hastily to the best shooting ready? of the day. Emperor Roscoe versus Gareth Hunt. Both in One, deadly form. Yeah! Well, Gareth gets his head in front, but Roscoe won't let him get away with that. The targets swing back and forth like spawns in a high wind. So it's three all, back to square one. Time is up and Roscoe comes out narrowly the winner and takes his team to victory in the archery with a score of seven targets remaining compared with 17 for the enforcers. So, with our usual 100 points to the winner and 50 to the losers, our running total now reads... Enforcers, 200. Informers, 250. Next, an old favourite, the obstacle course. And while the teams limber up, a word with Dave Prowse, the man behind the mask of Darth Vader. Um, it's interesting that you've made many movies um, in the, as not as yourself, but I mean recognisable as Dave Prowse actor. And then your greatest fame comes with you get, being invisible at one yeah. I've actually done about 25, 25 different movies. I, I made quite a career for myself playing Frankenstein, doing the, doing the monster in the various Frankenstein films. And I think it was because of the Frankenstein films that George Lucas had seen um, that he offered me the part of Darth Vader. Mm. But it's, it is ironic, as I said, that you, uh, you get this worldwide acclaim because, you know, I am the cult figure of the greatest grossing film of all time. It was, it was always my ambition. Uh, you know, when I was doing films early, early on, I always thought to myself, I'd love to be in a film like Sound of Music, you know, that millions and millions of people see and, mm. uh, and get sort of worldwide acclaim. And here I am in the, in the film, um, but nobody knows it's me. Uh, I'm not singing a word. I'm not singing a word, no, no. Actually, I was in New York when the, uh, the Time magazine came out, and of course with Darth Vader on the cover, and I felt like running up and down Fifth Avenue saying, look, folks, I've made it. It's me, it's me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the film, when you have the, the fights with the laser, yeah. uh, laser, what are they called? The laser well, the lightsabers. The lightsabers. Yeah. Uh, now, how is that done? Obviously, lasers go on forever, so you're not no, actually threatening don't. each other with real lasers. How is it done? What, what it is, in fact, is, it's like a double-handled flashlight. Well, the original ones, on the first one, the one with the Alec Guinness, are like double-handled flashlights, and they took out, if you take out the reflector and the, and the bulb, and insert a very fast revolving motor, and then into the motor, they, they insert a dowel about as thick as your finger. Um, about four foot long, and so that when you switch on, the dowel, re the whole thing revolves around very fast. Then they coat the dowel with reflective tape, you know, the type that the kids put on their uh, anoraks and things like this so that they can be seen at night. And so that when, when they actually switch on, the whole thing revolves around very, very fast, and it looks as though the whole thing is pulsating. And w when they make the thing grow, when they, make, when they lengthen the beam, all that happens is they just, you know, they put, put the, put the uh, lightsaber's head onto camera, and then just move the lightsaber away from camera, and that lengthens the... Uh, Thing. On the second ones, we, we actually did, we used the same pieces of equipment, but instead of having them revolving all the time, um, they still had them coated with reflective tape, but we, we did them as solids, because when I was fighting Sir Alec, we used to go crash, 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 and then pick the bits up off the floor <laughs> and start all over again. It was a... Well, let's, uh, let's see some of this in action, in the scene from the second of all these. This is The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Yeah. You have learned much, young one. Find them full of surprises. Your destiny. 
destiny lies with me, Skywalker. Obi-Wan knew this to be true. No. All too easy. And if Luke gets out of that, he might be able to manage our obstacle course. From these heats, we're looking for the fastest competitors from each team to take part in the final. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first heat of the obstacle course, we have for the enforcers on the inside lane, Paul Barrett. Paul punches the air confidently. And for the enforcers running against Paul, we have Ed Stewart. You notice Ed is wearing his boy's own elbow protectors. On your mark. Different start style, you notice. They've changed their minds once or twice. And they're off. Under the nets, first of all. And here's a new one, it's called the Wolf. Spurning the use of the rope, they both slide down almost together and throw themselves at the bars. Oh, pull off straight away and followed closely by Ed Stewart, who decides not to go back, limps bravely onto the wall. Over he goes, drops lightly onto the cushions and makes for the swing over the water. Gets over, goes back, forgets it, and squelches his way to the tyres, pursued slowly by Paul, and gently breaks the line. No finalists from this particular heat, I think. Oh, that was very eventful. Wow. <laughs> what, first of all, what happened uh, with all this equipment, Ed? Just show us what well, you've got on take, there. Well, I haven't taken these off since the very beginning of the programme when we came in that flaming hoop. And you're still not winning. <laughs> Well, oh. I don't know, he did all right there, didn't he? No, I, I was a clean line. You look... And I went into the water. I got all the tyres, which you'll see on replay, I'm sure. And I beat him. But twice you... and... Oh, I mean, oh. <laughs> Apart from all the equipment, you look as though you need Wellington boots there. Yes, I definitely went in there. I was no good at beaches anyway. <laughs> Paul, very eventful on those bars. Oh, I see. I came down like a ton of bricks. But, but I, I think I went too. back and completed, did you? No, I didn't have to, because I had not touched the MLR. We, to we have a dispute. We already have a dispute. Oh, well, I think it's a, over to the judges. Rooting, and so will my coach. We'll have to see what old Jack Taylor says. Over is. to the judges. All right. Well, looking at it again, Stewpot is penalised on the monkey bars, as indeed was Paul. But with Ed's other troubles, he tots up a massive bill of 47.8 seconds, and Paul wins. Eyes down for heat two. William Woolard against Brendan Price, two likely lads. And they're off. Driving under the nets. Now the roof. Ah, William chooses to slide under. Crafty move. Over the bars they go. Brendan breaks for the wall, but uh, hovers there a bit and gives William the chance to get ahead. He's taken the advantage. They both swing cleanly over the water. It's just the tyres to remain, and William breaks for the line. A fast time by the look of it. You both had a few problems there with the with the tyres and with the wall, the high bars. Don't know that you yeah. touched all of those, did you, Brendan? Yes, all the what the monkey walk. Yes. Oh yes, no, touched them all. all the that was absolutely right. Feet running all, all the tyres and all the tyres. Um, well, my three. feet are so big that they, they still pop out the top at the end. Yes, it was the third foot that seemed to be causing the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was ahead of me until we went over the wall. What happened to the wall? I think I, I bubbled on it. Well, no penalties there, so a narrow win for William by 1.2 seconds, and on we go. For the enforcers, it's Stephen Grimes versus the informers Emperor Roscoe, both limbering up and hoping to beat the Woolard time. They come to their marks. Oh, a false start there by Stephen Grimes, but they're off this time. No trouble under the nets, there seldom is. Stephen hurls himself right over the roof at great speed and launches himself at the bars, then for chasing bravely. Over the wall with a very clear lead for Stephen Grives. Chucks himself over the water, the tyres, and breaks like a true athlete for the tape. A Roman emperor behind, Roman all over the course. Stephen, that was very impressive for a first run. Oh, thank you very much from a professional. That was marvellous. <laughs> emperor, come and join us. <laughs> don't even smoke anymore. <laughs> well, I'll give up after oh. that. How does that compare with uh, doing road shows and being out late oh. at night? Ah, uh, it's hard. It's hard. I didn't really think I'd do too well on that. So I was happy to finish. Late nights. <laughs> you got away very quickly there it's at the wild. start. Oh, yes. I had a bit of a false start. Did and, you? The uh, flyer, was it? Well, I fell over and then he waited and off we went. Had a good run, yeah. 
But we've watched the, the previous two, and Brendan has terrific technique getting underneath the, the ropes. Yes, rolling under. I rolling know. under. It's marvellous. Woo! So, ah. through to the final then. I don't know. It's the uh, it's the the two fastest. I haven't well, we thought we'd time. let them catch up. You see, we need to be competitive. Of course. Sure. And Roscoe, with the slower time, falls prey and falls off the monkey bars, and his penalties add up to an easy win for Stephen in 20.3 seconds, which means the men's final will be between Stephen Grives and William Woolard. But first, we see the ladies' final. Ladies and gentlemen, running in the ladies' final, we have on the inside names being called as Maggie Tilden. Maggie Tilden, like a gazelle, very light on her feet. Jenny in lovely form. Cold nose, warm heart. One with the trousers, one without. Similar starts. No trouble at the net. Now the roof, which both elects to go under, of course. But it's Maggie first to the bars. And they're taking this very steadily, a classic way of how to do it without losing any points. But it's Maggie first to the wall. But it's very close indeed at this point. Still Maggie forges ahead once more. Wet feet for her, wet feet for both girls. Just the tyres, and Maggie it is who scoots for the line and wins just. Arms raised in triumph, Maggie, well done. Jenny, come and join us. That looks Sugar very me. hard work on those monkey bars, but you both did exceptionally well as well, I think, uh, as any of the girls I've ever seen. I wish I was a monkey, I could have done it much better. <laughs> oh, God, Maggie. I don't think I've got any lungs, you know. I think this is the problem. I've only got one. Is that <laughs> right? Yeah, through that. The legs go out in cotton wool. It's half a cotton wool. Does your master's by training uh, come Not into force there? Major, what have you done to me? I find you should have trained me you better than this. You get so overexcited. But your limbs just won't work. They almost go rigid. And what about the rope swing? You got rather wet and bedraggled. Yeah. Well, I don't know whether we... How many faults did you make? I can't remember. I don't, I don't, I don't, you don't get penalty for jumping with... Drinking is not part of this obstacle course, you know. I find I out, you didn't get any thoughts of the water. It's psychological. I go in it. <laughs> Cooled me off then. Right in it. Oh. Well, wet feet don't count for the girls. No penalties. Maggie wins. Uh, we had the times of the men's and the women's finals to find an overall winner. And now it's the men's turn. Two fine athletes should be a ding dong race. This over the roof, right over the top for Stephen. Very quickly through the monkey bars. The wall, by the way, is up to 10 feet for this final. Soars up into the sky, and it's Stephen still in the lead over the water. The tyres cleanly taken. He breaks for the line in very fast time. Just I know, I'm not. You were like <laughs> grease lightning first time through, and even faster than I think, weren't you? Well, I don't know whether we've got it because we were a second behind. That's right, and you had lots so, of make-up, uh, so it'd be interesting. And here comes talking. William, and of course he was telling me he got a hamstring what injury. A bit man, man. Look at this man. How's the leg? All right. Very well, indeed. Yes, really? he was very fast, wasn't he? Well, it'll be very interesting to see what the judges thought, won't it? <laughs> in, in the <laughs> final. Delicious. <It's> <laughs> <laughs> Go and get your breath back. Thank you. Well, another clear run, but Stephen's time of 19.4 seconds eats up that deficit and gives an overall win to the enforcers. This means that, uh, once again, our running total shows the teams absolutely level, 300 points each, and a nice tidy way to be at the start of our six-a-side football. Five men, one woman to be on the pitch at any one time, no limit to substitutes. And the first thing is, of course, Captain Stewart and Price square up for the toss. Tails. And this time he's called heads. incorrectly. It's two wins, two wins on the trot to me. Um, we'll kick down. Formalities concluded. Over to our match commentator, Gerald Sinstadt. The informers in the dark tops kicking from right to left in this first half. That's their goalkeeper, Ed Stewart. Robertson. For a Roscoe. Bad back pass. And that surely is above head high from Willard. That'll be a free kick. Quickly taken by the enforcers. Jenny Lee right. And it's broken for Tom Adams, who has scored. But was there a bit of skullduggery going on on that far touchline? Tom Adams has got the goal, but I think the two ladies there were doing a bit of holding. It's broken nicely anyway for Adams, and he's tucked it just inside the near post to make it 1-0 to the enforcers. Well, the early first goal could well be important. 
Now for Roscoe, and it didn't reach him, intercepted by Hunt. Not a very hard shot, but Stewart has made a mess of it. It's turned back across the face of his goal, and Woolard clears. But did he, I wonder, stray into the circle there? That seems to be the point of the protests. Jack Taylor calling over Brendan Price and saying that if there's any enforcing going on, he'll do it. And a throw-in is the decision. Hunt to take. Step over and drives with the shot. The shot's gone wide and he's gone down. I don't think he connected properly with that. And he's twisted that left ankle. Certainly in a bit of pain. They're not too worried. But uh, I think that's the end of the game for Stephen Grimes. Carried off by Dave Prowse and I don't think we'll see him in action again. Roll out by Ed Stewart. Adams got tangled up in his own feet. This is Robertson for the informants. Chance to shoot. Well, he may regret it. He had two men on his left and a pass could have been better there than a shot. Substitute Dave Prowse on the field now. There's Jenny Lee Wright. Uh, it didn't reach Dave Prowse. Robertson getting the luck of the rebounds, but it's gone out of play. Brendan Price, and that's an ambitious throw. And if Adams had connected better, it could have been a second goal for him. And there's the half-time hooter with the enforcers leading by Tom Adams' goal. I think probably now we shall see the two ladies substituted with Jacqueline Pierce coming on for the enforcers and Sue Cook for the informers. Join us again for the second half. Welcome back. And as you see, the two ladies are on, Jacqueline Pierce for the enforcers and Sue Cook for the informers. Enforcers lead 1-0 as the second half begins. The informers in the dark tops in this half kicking left to right. Play a bit tight down that far touchline and that surely was a foul. That'll be the first free kick of this second half to be taken by Brendan Price, the enforcers captain. And then out of play by Dave Prowse. He's certainly a very imposing figure. And I notice nobody rushing too much to tackle him. Woolard's throw back to Ed Stewart. Roscoe didn't right. make contact. Jacqueline Pierce has lost it. That's a good looking tackle. Still the ball going loose. And Robertson has picked up on it. And he's made himself a chance here and scores. That's one all. The informers back on turn simply because Robertson was quicker to react than anybody else when that ball ran loose made the decision, took charge, and although Paul Darrow came to the edge of his circle, couldn't keep the ball out. One all. How then will the enforcers respond to that? Oh, with a goal straight away, Tom Adams, right from the kickoff. Tom Adams has got his second goal of the game. There's big Dave Prowse involved again, pushing it through, and it's just a toe poke from Tom Adams underneath Ed Stewart's dive. 2-1 to the enforcers. Can they hang on now through this second half? Jacqueline Pierce loses out on that, and in goes Dave Prowse again. That was a very hefty challenge on Mick Robertson, and he certainly felt it. No action from Jack Taylor, but Mick Robertson certainly feeling under the weather there. Dave Prowse, when he goes in, lets his opponents know he's been there. But applause from the bench, because Mick Robertson has decided he's going to soldier on. Ankle just feeling a little bit jippy. Throw in on the far side now to the enforcers. Right away across the pitch, Dave Prowse, and it's coming to Jacqueline Pierce, and she's had the shot, but put it wide. We haven't yet in the Star Games football matches seen a goal from one of the ladies. Must surely only be a matter of time. Throw in now for the informers. It's also right across the pitch, but put out of play by Brendan Price. Bob Kilby. For Roscoe with the throw. Price in again, closing down the space. He's very solid at the back there. We've been accustomed to seeing him as a goalkeeper, but he's opted to stay out in this game. And again, he shadows and forces the shot into the side net. Paul Darrow throwing out. This is Price once more. That's not such a good clearance, though. Informers finding a way through, but Darrow once again. That's not such a good throw out, though, and that is a goal scored by Bob Kilby. I think one or two people here weren't concentrating. Backs turn to the ball and Kilby seizes the throw out and puts it very nicely into the corner to level up the scores again. Forces two, informers two, and remember the two teams level on points when this match began and only two events to come. 
and things very much in a stalemate at the moment back again to Ed Stewart in the informers goal and there is the hooter signifying the end of the game so it will be decided on penalties first team to go ahead will be the winners of the match Brendan Price must be wishing he'd started the game in goal I suppose although he has the option to go in goal for the penalties but first it'll be Tom Adams to take one for the enforcers and Ed Stewart has saved it so now what well, Brendan Price has chosen, in fact, to go in goal, but he still doesn't make the save. Bob Kilby scores, and Brendan Price must now be regretting his decision because the informers have beaten the enforcers 3-2. And as Star Game Stan, television's unluckiest mascot, world collapses around him, we'll check the score. The informers take a lead 400 to 350. Well, didn't you do well? Two goals there. Quite thrilled, Pam. Quite really? thrilled. Yes. You did a bit of practicing. You I've been practicing a little bit. Yes. Have you yes. Really? But I psyched Brendan actually. Yes. I looked him straight between the eyes that time, and I thought I'm going to put it between your legs. And sure enough, well, you did it. You managed it very well. I think you actually earned a lot of the like girls, didn't you? We certainly did. Because <laughs> Maggie, Maggie really helped. I thought Maggie did very well. Oh, it was Maggie. so frightening though, because everyone was taking it so seriously, and I was terrified of getting offside or something. Have you, you told them when you said you were hot training? I come hot from the casualty tent. What news? Mick Robertson is having cold compresses on his ankle and he may not be able to run in the relay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Mick, what exactly happened? I don't know, I just went over on it. What about the injury? What, what have you got there well, now? I twisted it and it's come, coming oh, it's up come in a, a massive great lump. Lump. Well, Doctor, can he run in the f final of the sprint? No, I'm afraid he's torn a ligament on the outside of his ankle and mm. um, he won't be able to run on that. No. So he's definitely out for the relay. That's so disappointing. Your chance to be a star. The running. That's the bit I like, the running. Never mind, we won the football. So you're back the in the team, game. The team will carry on. Well, injuries plague both sides, so the relay teams are depleted to four instead of the usual five runners. And this is what they do. The first three go from the start up to the far bounce board and then back to the start again where they hand over the baton. That's 100 metres. That the last runner has to go up to the bounce board all the way back down to the bounce board behind the start and he hasn't finished yet all the way back up to the other bounce board and then it's back to the finishing tape a distance of 200 meters now the runners they've all had a rough afternoon they're bruised but unbowed here's the lineup for the informers william woolard followed by ed stewart then it'll be maggie philbin and their anchor man is bob kilby and the enforcers have Paul Darrow in front, then Brendan Price, Jenny Lee Wright, and their anchorman is Tom Adams. Over to our starter and the commentary from Alan Pascoe. On your mark. So, on top of all their injury problems, the teams also have to contend with the very soft ground. It's a little bit squelchy in places. They're away first time. Paul Darrow for the enforcers. William Woolard there for the informers. Down to the first turn, very tentative, everybody taking it very cautiously on this first run. The first hundred metres over, it's William Woolard over to Ed Stewart and Brendan Price on the far side for the enforcers. And already we can see Ed Stewart almost lame with injury, only in the team because of the injury to Mick Robertson. Very brave of him to run, but that leaves it wide open for Brendan Price. And there you see the gap that he's been able to open up as he hands over to Jenny Lee Wright. It'll be Maggie Philburn to try and catch up some of that distance for the informers. Jenny Lee Wright, very serious, into the turn. Got a good turn, actually. But Maggie Philburn up and almost over the top of the bounce board. She comes back, beginning to pull back the distance now slightly. And so we hand over to the final 200-meter leg. And it's Tom Adams for the enforcers and Bob Kilby trying to make up the gap for the informers. Tom Adams away slowly, perhaps holding something back. Kilby beginning to make up the gap now. This is good. Now we've got a race on our hands. Kilby coming into the turn, just four or five yards down. Adams almost falls over. Still not looking very confident. Takes a glance to the side. Shaw Taylor shouts them on from behind. Kilby's coming into the final turn. A good turn will help him, but no. Tom Adams is just going to hang on. What a great race. Tom Adams holds on and wins for the enforcers. Yeah. 
Tom, does that make up for the miss in the football? That was mine. Well, in the football, we were all over it, weren't we? It's my fault, that stupid penalty. Let's see what Adam Pascoe. <laughs> Brendan, Let well me alone. Coach, well coached on your team there. Yes, yes, I think our tactics work. And you do well this boy then. Oh. Yeah, he Legs coming up. The death, Bob? As they say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he ran very well. well I thought I was going to catch him. Until just as he hit that last board, I felt my leg go. And I thought, oh. <laughs> and that was it. He pulled away. Great victory. 200 metres is, 200 meters is a very long way to run, actually, isn't it? It is, actually. Yeah, I mean, you've got to admire Alan Wells and these other people that oh, do it. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Excuse me. What about the lady there, running very well? It was, it was all down to you. Elbows. Really? They think elbows. Think so the way the legs arms. went, I thought about elbows. Right. Elbows. Right. Elbows. 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 Well, in fact, it wasn't Brendan, but the changeover between Brendan and Jenny Lee Wright. And as you can see there, Jenny sets off a little bit early. She's out of the box, and that's definitely a faulty changeover. And that's early takeoff cost the enforcers a two-second penalty, but their lead was big enough to absorb it and still give them a win in 1 minute 25.9 seconds. And that means that once again, the ideal star game situation comes up. We go to the last event. Teams are all square, 450 each. Well, they're brave, but uh, ultimately useless running Absolutely. there. I thought I was almost as bad as you. Steady on. Well, I've seen you. <laughs> I kept running along thinking, God, this is as bad as Michael Askew. And so you were, <laughs> and it served you right. So, it is absolutely all on the tug of war. 100 points to the winners only. What about your injury-ravaged teams? You're both in a bit of a state, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, we've got um, Stephen Grimes drives, ricked his, his ankle in the football. So he's totally out of it now. And we've had to rejig all the weights and everything to try and get a team together. Same for you? Well, we're worse off, actually, because Emperor Roscoe and Mick Robinson are both injured now, so I don't know what we're going to do. We'll have to have both the girls in, and he's got Big Dave. Uh, yeah. we, we, we think, or we were expecting them just to concede it. Um, just to save, Never, sir! To save the carnage. But Never! He's not gentlemanly, you know, these Radio 1 people. A fight to the end. That's what we like. That's what it's going to be, I think. Oh, so, and it's 100 points only to the winner. Whoever wins the pull will go forward to the final of the series. Let's meet the teams. Ed Stewart, captain of the Informers. He's set his piece, now he's got to do it. There's Maggie Philbin. Not a lot of her, but she's a determined girl. Ever fit, William Woolard. Adrian Love, 131 pounds. That's just his tracksuit. Sue Cook, brave and attractive. And Bob Kilby, a solid gent, lashing himself in there. Now to the opposition, the enforcers, Tom Adams, he's a strongly built fella. Brendan Price, well we've seen him in action, he's as fit and gritty as they can come. Jacqueline Pierce, an unknown quantity Jacqueline. Paul Darrow, good weight there, and with Dave Prowse on your side, the force must be with you. Who is going to win this final event? Jack Taylor is the man in charge, and there he is. The whistle goes, the pull is on. Will the enforcers be immovable? Hardly so. The informers seem to be going in the right direction, which is backwards in their case. And William Woolard even has time for yelling instructions to his team members. How can this be? Is it perhaps the encouragement they're getting from their coach? They're doing extremely well. The enforcers seem to be giving way. I can't believe this. Can it be true? Indeed it is. And it's all over. The informers have won. What a turn up! What a turn up! What a turn up! What was the secret? Well, I think Fee's on deck. Quick kill! Quick kill! Fee's on deck! Quick kill! Quick kill! You didn't hang about, you pulled straight away. You pulled straight away. So you find a short, sharp pull and boom. So, congratulations to today's winners, the Informers, who have amassed no less than 550 points to the Enforcers, 450. But the real winners, of course, are the charities who profit by their efforts. The Informers have raised £1,100 for variety at work and the Enforcers £900 for handicapped children. Well, what a dramatic end to this first round of Star Games. It means, of course, that the Informers have earned their place in the final. Next week's heat is between the Thespians and the Comedians. Until then, with congratulations to today's winners, it's goodbye until next week.